G'day guys, Nogs here. Today I want to show you how I went from being an LFR hero to progressing through most of Mythic and Taurus in the space of 6 months. Throughout the years I never really took this game too seriously. I would sometimes subscribe here and there just to do some casual battlegrounds or random heroics when tilted from League of Legends. But last year a few of my mates who casually raid invited me along to one of their groups. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. I played without macros, add-ons and even most of my abilities were clicked. To make matters even worse, I was asked to fill in as a tank while one of the officers took a break. The first raid they invited me to was an absolute disaster. I was constantly looking at my health bar at the top left hand corner of my screen, then quickly switching my eyes to the top right to see if my ignore pain had fallen off, whilst panicking and I had to click my shield block down the bottom manually. I was looking everywhere except my character, who in the meantime was spreading fire onto the whole raid group. It was straight after this experience I knew I had to change the way I played. I started researching and finding guides online and slowly began to overhaul my UI and how I approach the game in general. In this video, I want to encourage new and returning players to use some of these tools to improve their skills and hopefully get more enjoyment out of the game like I did. The set of add-ons I use are not ideal, but many of you had questions from my previous class guide videos about my UI setup, so here it goes. This is an example of my typical healing UI that I use in dungeon and raid scenarios. I have numbered the most obvious add-ons on the screen for those of you who prefer not to watch the whole video and quickly jump to the section. The links to all these add-ons and macros will be right below the video title. The first one is Shadow Unit Frames. This frame add-on is nothing special. I've set up mine basically to only show myself, the enemy and the boss frames. I choose this add-on because it's extremely easy to navigate and get started with. Although I don't feel it's important to see my character's portrait face, especially in combat, I like having a simple class color rectangle that allows me to stack additional information about myself or the target right above our respective frames. However, this is one of those add-ons I could probably easily live without, as the default frames can now be centralized with like two clicks of the button. If you're just starting to embrace add-ons, I suggest keeping the default frames that Blizzard give you. Alternatively, if you wanted something in between, I'd suggest unit frames improve. This requires no customization, just download the add-on from the link below and you're set. I use Grid2 as my party and raid frame add-on. This functions much the same as like LBI and Voodoo, but Grid is arguably easier to modify on the go. What separates third party frame add-ons and the Blizzard default ones is extra information and customizability you can incorporate into them. In high keys, mythic raiding, it's almost essential to know when people are using personals. For instance, in Mythic Plus, you have a big boss one-shot ability coming, and you and another player have not used a defensive. You can make a calculated decision to give your external to that player, preventing them from dying or putting it on yourself. There's no secret to high-end PvE in World of Warcraft. It's all about having more information to minimize the mistakes. I would highly encourage anyone who wants to embark on this sort of content to embrace third-party raid frame add-ons. Below you will find links to video guides and strings on the following three raid frame add-ons if you're looking for it in more detail. If you're looking to adopt similar healing frame add-ons to mine, then you should head over to Mad Skills TV. He is a cutting edge resto druid who constantly updates his Grid 2 profile and shares his UI with his viewers. Alternatively, if you wanted to go down the voodoo route, the man to see is Jack. Along with casting the MDI and streaming what seems like 24-7, Jack is usually able to answer and assist any new Voodoo users in just help setting it up. But the best example I can find of a perfect UI in my opinion is from Method Zone JD. As you can see, he is using LVUI to track everyone's personal cooldowns, in particularly the tank's mitigation. This gives him more information to know when he can tunnel DPS or start proactively healing, which is extremely important if you're pushing those high Mythic Plus keys like he is. While these three add-ons serve the same purpose, it can just come down to personal preference. If you're a healer main or you sometimes heal, I highly suggest clicking the links below and checking out these guys and their content to see what fits best for you. Bartender 4 is my action bar add-on. It can manipulate a variety of different size bars and place them wherever I choose. As you can see, most of my characters have two long bars down the bottom, closely followed by an invisible bag and interface bar. This is arguably the best feature of Bartender because I don't need that information 99% of the time and when I do, I can just drag my mouse over and show them. The big red nameplates you see is from an add-on called KUI Nameplates. This add-on is similar to the well-known tidy plates that majority of players use, but KUI gives you the ability to customize in much greater detail. For instance, I play a lot of dot classes, so having oversized stacking nameplates is more important to me when going into a pool, as most of my abilities are using a mouse over macro and not the old tab targeting. I find bigger nameplates and cast bars to have greatly improved my multi-dot damage, as it's more accurate and faster to apply your dots using a mouse rather than awkwardly spamming tab targeting hoping it works. This not only works really well for dot classes, but also has an inbuilt feature for tanks. 
customizing nameplate colors based on threat percentages. Because I can't export the KUI string, I will quickly go through each tab to show you my settings. That way, if you are interested, you can freeze frames on the video and replicate the exact setup. The castbar add-on I'm using is called Quartz. I use Quartz for my character and the enemy castbar, as you can customize the size and color of interruptible and non-interruptible cars. This is vital going into a new expansion, as we are relearning what we can and can't do to new mobs. Along with easier visuals, Quartz also does something very unique for channeled abilities. When you channel most abilities in WoW, the cast has several increments that represent each tick within that channel. Quartz allows you to see those segments, which is extremely helpful when mind flaying on a Shadow Priest or draining a target soul on a Warlock. Pratt is a simple chat add-on that allows you to mouse over items in the chat box without actually having to click them. The add-on also offers a large amount of customization and has the most troll features I've ever seen in an add-on that will drive your guildies up the wall. As I said before, there's a reason why I chose to put these add-ons first. Not because they're necessarily good, but because add-ons 1-6 to six can all be replaced by one single modification called LVI. LVI offers the same level if not more customization than the 6 add-ons I previously talked about. To download LVI, it does require, however, going to their website and downloading the add-on manually, further requiring you to unzip and place the add-on in your WoW folder. But the add-on wraps up most things really well in a nice, neat package, and will no doubtably take players some time to get used to, but will reward you in the long run for doing so. There's not much LVI can't do, but in my opinion, if there was one single add-on that I would recommend to new players, it's Weak Auras. WoW isn't particularly a hard game at all. The first time you log in, Blizzard actually sets you up for failure by giving you an abomination of an interface. I don't believe most players are bad, I just believe most players are lazy and they don't want to do research outside the game. Luckily, Weak Auras alleviates a lot of that hassle for the new player. If you're new to a class, you can simply follow the link below and select your specific spec that you want to play and copy the string straight into your WoW interface. Using a default UI, I'll show you how easy it is to get started with Weak Auras. Once in the game with Weak Auras 2 enabled, all you have to do is type slash WA. This then brings up the menu. From here, it's as simple as clicking import, copy pasting the string that we chose from wago.io, and after a few moments, you'll see the icons flashing up on your screen. You then click the anchor and drag wherever you want on your screen. Although I could not recommend more on putting this in the middle of your screen right under your character. This further centralizes all relative information you need whilst being able to keep an eye on where your character is. If you do choose to progress into tougher content, you will start to notice raid leaders and even mythic plus groups linking in-game weak aura strings to each other. This is hands down the best feature that weak auras has to offer. The mythic plus interrupt tracker as you can see on the top left is just one of the many awesome weak aura strings that I found searching through wago.io. I highly suggest everyone have a browse through the classes, dungeons and raid strings as BFA approaches to find the tools that work best for you. In every global cooldown, the developers want you to make a choice between damage, crowd control, healing or even damage mitigation depending on your role. What separates an LFR player from a mythic raider is planning ahead. Because PvE is mostly scripted content, the encounters usually have timers for certain boss abilities or phases and by keeping track of those timers, you have more knowledge of what's incoming next. To see boss timers, we will need mods like DBM or Bigwigs. These add-ons work very similar to each other. They are coded based on encounter design and fight timers to simulate kind of like a coaching and guidance throughout the fight, in case the player becomes too distracted or complacent. Out of these two boss add-ons, Bigwigs is hands down more superior. The level of detail and customization you can set up with Bigwigs is unmatchable. I used DBM when I first started, and I was told it was more of like a training wheels type add-on that yells at you for doing something wrong. But once you get used to looking at the fight timers and upcoming abilities, you won't need to hear Run away, little girl. ever again. As a caster main, checking the boss timers every second cast just becomes natural after using these add-ons. I suggest anyone looking to improve that they place the timers in an easy to read centralized spot, kind of like how I have on the left hand side of my character portrait. Ah, the damage meters, the bane of every raid leader's existence. If you use damage meters and you only look at damage done, you're doing it wrong. Add-ons like Recount, Scarter, Details can be awesome tools for identifying issues on the fly. Why is that priority ad not dying in time? Well, let's just check the damage taken by enemies. Why is that tank getting absolutely spanked? Let's check his mitigation uptime. What is everyone dying to? Let's check damage taken by spell. Details is objectively the best choice out of all these three add-ons, as it offers so much more information, customization, not to mention it's the most accurate when comparing to Warcraft logs. I suggest anyone who's new to details to make a quick bookmark selection, and when things go wrong, get used to going through the relevant categories, trying to identify what's wiping your team, and be able to contribute in rectifying the weaknesses in your raid composition. 
there is one ridiculously annoying feature of Mythic Plus that does my head in every time this add-on isn't turned on. Whenever you pull a boss or someone dies, you have this huge disgusting dungeon quest panel thing intruding on half your screen. The add-on Move Anything allows you to manipulate and move all those little annoying things that Blizzard forces upon us. I'm not saying I hate the Mythic Dungeon timers, they are very important when pushing keys, but with a few clicks you can make it manageable and not so intrusive. I can't tell you how many times I watch people go into Mythic Plus boss and fudge their opener because they're too busy minimizing that damn dungeon guide. Also I want to give honorable mentions to the following Mythic Plus and PvP add-ons. First one is Elitism Helper. This add-on will single-handedly check any player who takes avoidable damage and more importantly, telling them in the chat window how much avoidable damage they took, ensuring they won't be so quick to blame the healer that didn't heal them for 150% of their total HP. The add-on is very similar to training young dogs, ensuring the bad behavior is corrected as early as possible, allowing for a smooth run. Method Dungeon Tools by Nogger is a fantastic resource for mapping out your Mythic Plus route. You can set the key parameters and find out the exact percentage you need after planning every pull. You can export this to your party so everyone is on the same page. They have also updated the add-on to include the new Mythic Plus affix Infestation, which plays a huge role in battle for Azeroth dungeons. Exorcist Raid Tools and Aura 3 will allow you to track other players' important abilities. The healing officer in the raid will usually have these add-ons enabled and delegate cooldowns based on the situation. Aura 3 is also very helpful in checking raid consumables, item level and even players' latency to the server. S Arena and Gladius are nice simple enemy frames for arena games. It can show you trinket, interrupts and other important cooldowns to allow you to capitalize on the opposing team. A very similar add-on for Battlegrounds is called Battleground Enemies. This is especially important in rated RPGs when you want your melee to be calling hard switch priority targets and everyone switching at the same time. Also quickly want to touch on a variety of important macros that I think every player should have in their toolkit. The first one is a hostile mouse over macro. In the example I have Moonfire selected. But if you wanted to copy this macro for all your spells, all you'd have to do is replace both Moonfire texts with whatever offensive spell you choose. Don't worry about selecting the correct icon or anything like that, the show tooltip line will do all that for you if you put in the spell name. Using this mouse over macro will however allow you to keep targeting the priority target whilst applying dots and interrupts crowd control effects on additional enemies. Same goes for the next one, which is instead using a friendly mouse over macro for spells like rejuvenation, flash heal, healing surge. This is significantly faster than manually clicking each player's frame and it's a mistake I see a lot of healer mains still make to this day. Once I embraced mouse over macros or add-ons that perform similar jobs like click, I saw a dramatic improvement in my healing. If you have area of effect abilities like Starfall, Healing Rain or Blizzard, this macro is a godsend. It will automatically cast wherever your mouse is, saving you a significant amount of keyboard presses in the long run. While using Demon Hunter Sigils or even Priest Feathers, you can have a macro that casts a spell right on top of your player. Just by removing the brackets mouse and putting in brackets player, this will put it on top of the player despite where your mouse is. Another helpful macro in Mythic Plus is a nameplate script that determines when the enemy nameplates will show up depending on your proximity to them. I use this regularly when doing very tight mob density dungeons like Lower Karazhan or Quarter Stars. I will switch multiple ranged conditions depending on the situation as not to accidentally ninja pull additional mobs up ahead of me. If you sometimes heal like I do, it can be very distracting to see all the green healing values light up all over your screen. To turn this off, you can use the following script. And to turn it back on, you can replace the 0 with a 1. You can also replace healing with damage if you'd rather not see the DPS numbers on your screen. That wraps up pretty much all the current add-ons and macros I feel will help with new or returning players. I hope all of you were able to get some useful information out of this video, as I wish I had a guide like this when I first started playing. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask down below, as I will always try to respond to every comment and help the community improve as much as I can. Thanks for your continued support, and expect some class guides very soon. Cheers all.